Hello and welcome to the Warframe tier list. Today we'll be going over Sevagoth, and first things first, let's go over the builds. I'll be discussing the builds from my least favorite to my favorite. So the first build is a 2-1 combo focus build, where you debuff the enemies with so, and then you reap them doing a percentage of their health and an AoE. There are multiple issues with this build, and I will discuss them now. So the first problem with this build is if you are not the host, your so debuff will not actually apply to the enemies, making this build completely useless. It's terrify, then two, and then one. Yeah, that's what's supposed to happen. That I'm wasn't. Like, ha is it a host bug? Oh. Because what's supposed to happen is. Is it a host bug? Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't work. Interesting. It's a host bug. Yes, this build just does not function if you are not the host of the mission. That is already enough to just move on from this build and to forget it exists, but I will continue. The other problem with this build is it doesn't really accomplish anything, and it's also extremely energy hungry, meaning that you can't really utilize Gloom. So what I tried to do at first was I tried running something like Terrify to armor strip the enemies as just using 2-1 alone isn't really enough to kill enemies in the steel path, we have to either armor strip them or prime them with viral. So my first thought was to just run around being a hallway warrior, spamming terrify into the 2-1 combo. The problem is, that was very low KPM, and it was completely unsustainable energy wise unless I used a bunch of Archon shards for energy orb efficiency. So that ruled that build out. Then I tried pool with high range and low duration, and this was the best I could work out. Pool not only costs less, but it also pulls the enemies in, so your 2 is essentially doing more damage as every single enemy it hits does an AoE around that particular enemy, damaging every enemy around it. So the more stacked up, the more damage it does. On top of that, well, sucking in enemies just always increases your KPM. But then, now you also have to prime them with Viral, or you have to armor strip them by slotting Moderai and using Moderai second, I mean, sorry, Unero, and using Caustic Strike to armor strip them. And the problem with all of this is if you're going through all of this effort to kill enemies, you could just simply pull them in and then shoot them with a gun. And you would get higher KPM and you wouldn't have to worry about your energy sustain. So, while this build does work and you can get like 100-ish KPM, it just isn't really like, it, it doesn't really do anything. And then it also just simply doesn't work when you aren't the host. So that's why 2-1 combo builds on Sevagoth are kind of just forever going to be whatever. The only way that you can make them work is if they ever get bug fixed to work when you aren't the host, and then if you just run a bunch of Archon Shards. But that's way too much investment for something that's honestly pretty mediocre either way. As for the second build, it is just a standard gun build, and there are a lot of different ways that you can play this. This is a health tank build, making use of Gloom, opting for extremely high strength and Nourish. Nourish covers my negative efficiency, and it gives me a fat damage buff and an AoE CC, stack with gloom and also aoe viral nourish combined with your reap will allow you to scale for a pretty long time though what will probably happen is eventually you'll start dying rather than your weapons stop killing as that is the problem whenever you play a warframe as a health tank with no form of dr in the kit whatsoever other things that you can do instead of nourish is if you do this you have to run better efficiency and less strength run something like Breach Surge as it's a CC. Uh, you can run something like Silence as it's a CC. Pretty much any other damage buff and or any CC works very well with this build as Gloom extends the duration of CCs and damage buffs are always nice. As for the third build and my favorite build, though in my opinion still not spectacular, this is an Eclipse build making use of Total Eclipse. The reason that I chose this specifically 
is because this build is opting to stay in the shadow form for as long as possible. Eclipse is one of the few helmet or one of the few abilities in the entire game that Savagoth can make use of in his shadow form. Because you press Eclipse and now you have a lingering buff around your body that your shadow form takes advantage of. Uh, speaking of the shadow form, this was the build that I was using on the shadow form. I was using Arcane Energize instead of Arcane Blessing for a few reasons. Arcane Energize helps me keep my energy up on my main Savagoth, and Arcane Blessing isn't as great as it seems. Anytime you die in your shadow form, you lose all of your stacks on Arcane Blessing. And again, you don't have any form of DR unless, you're <clears throat> unless your Eclipse happens to be giving you DR, which isn't very likely. So you will just randomly get one shot and lose all of your stacks of Arcane Blessing. And when that happens, then you're more likely to get one shot again. So it becomes like impossible to build up Arcane Blessing after you die the first time, making this Arcane completely useless at a certain point. Whereas Arcane Energize will always help you keep your energy up on your main Sevagoth, which is a problem that the build has if you aren't running Arcane Energize. With Arcane Energize on both builds, you have absolutely no sustained problems whatsoever. Uh, another thing you can do is you can run Preparation in the Exilus, as every time you go into the 4, your energy gets reset on your Shadow, but I found it to be kind of useless, but if you really want to, you can just run Prime Flow instead of Streamline, and then Preparation up here. Another thing to make note of Sevagoth's Shadow and Sevagoth's Shadow Claws is the Claws cannot benefit from Gladiator mods no matter what. Not the main benefit, but the set bonus. The wiki says that the set bonus works for Gladiator mods and the Shadow Claws, but the wiki is wrong. I extensively tested this. You can put every single Gladiator mod on your main build, on your main melee, on Sevagoth's Shadow and Shadow Claws, and you will not get any crit chance buff from them at all. This is a huge detriment to Sevagoth, as his Shadow Claws really don't deal that much damage, and if they could get the free crit chance, they could probably scale a bit better. They would definitely increase your KPM, because what happens is anytime you're hitting an Eximus, it takes forever to kill them, especially if it's like a super tanky one like a, uh, like a Bombard Eximus. It, it can take like three to four seconds to kill them. And if you just had like 80% more crit chance, it, it, would, it would do so much. But unfortunately, it just doesn't work. Another thing that doesn't work on Sevagoth is the auras do not stack. So if you have an aura on your main Sevagoth and then an aura on your shadow, whenever you're in your shadow, you lose the benefits of the aura from your main Sevagoth. This is another detriment, which is also really annoying. Uh, another detriment, because you'll, you'll be noticing there's a lot of issues with Sevagoth. <laughs> another thing is, you don't benefit from any of your focus schools when in the shadow form either. Uh, any passive buffs, you instantly lose and you don't carry over any active buffs either. So something like Phoenix Talons, which is just a passive, you do not gain the benefit of while you're in your shadow form. Something like you narrow when you're using uh, poise or yeah like poise for the prime short footed effect it doesn't carry over. The innate 200 armor doesn't carry over. The only thing that works when you're in your shadow form is if you place hardened wellspring beforehand and then you can get the 20% ability strength in your shadow if you stand inside of it and the extra energy while standing inside of it. The problem is this is completely useless as Zenric doesn't work on the main Savagoth, and the main Savagoth is the only Savagoth that has energy problems. So this is just complete. the only thing that works is completely useless. But moving on to the rest of the kit, I was using a Phantasma for dealing with Nullifiers and any Eximus that were a problem while I was outside of the Shadow. I was using an Electric Phantasma as my Riven forces me into an Electric build. Uh, if you're not armor stripping, ideally you would be using heat instead, but I was not struggling to kill them, so this did work. As for the secondary, I highly suggest the epitaph for AoE viral priming, and as for the melee, I highly suggest the glaive for an AoE nuke, as Sevagoth desperately needs it at times. Of course, focus schools are Moderai or Unero if you want the armor strip or the innate 200 armor. 
and companions are just a standard panzer build with the synth mods equipped. Now moving on to the rankings, we're discussing Sevigoth in relation to four separate topics. Firstly, his KPM, secondly, his survivability, thirdly, his viability, and finally, how fun he is to play. All of this data is sampled from a one hour solo steel path mod run with no specters, no on call, and of course, no archon shards. Now let's begin with the first topic, his KPM. I am going to try to be swift here as the start of the video was pretty long. So Savagoth's KPM isn't that bad, but it's definitely not great, it's right around average. Uh, the main problems stem from his Shadow Claws not benefiting from the Gladiator set effect means that they just simply don't deal enough damage. Anytime you're only 30 some minutes into a Seal Path mission, and your weapons are taking more than like a second or two to kill an enemy, that is a problem. Yes, you could argue that you could just throw on some red Archon shards to make the claws do additional damage, but if you need to slot crit damage on your for Archon shards for your melee to do more damage that early into a mission, it, again, it's just like self-reporting that the weapons just aren't good. The other problem stems from if you choose to use Arcane Blessing over Arcane Energize on the Shadow, you're now wasting a bunch of time whenever you're in your main form trying to rebuild up your energy. So that also lowers your KPM. And even when everything goes right and you're using Energize and not Blessing, the KPM still peaks at around like 95 after an hour. Like, yes, you can get over 100, like, early on, but sub-20 minutes KPM is mostly irrelevant because nullifiers don't even really start spawning until about 15 to 20 minutes in anyway, and that's when your build really starts getting tested. So, yeah, the KPM is just not that great. And even if you choose to go, like, a gun build, it's still not good because you're slowing all the enemies down with Gloom. And now you also don't have access to a Suck, Whereas when you're using the Shadow Form, you have the 1, which is just pretty much a pool. It's actually a really nice pool. It has a really long range, and it also has no line of sight issues. So it's a really nice pool, so you lose access to that, and you're slowing all the enemies down. So you get roughly the exact same KPM either way, it's just less fun. So because of all these reasons that his Shadow Claws fail to scale even remotely well like they fall off only 20 minutes in if that and even if you choose to ignore that and go a gun build you're just slowing all the enemies down with gloom you no longer have access to a pool his kpm just isn't that great so i'll give him an average kpm rank of a b now moving on to his survivability and if you asked me to rank his survivability on the 2-1 combo build i would just give it a flat out f it was absolutely terrible, especially since you don't have access to Gloom with that build. And even if you choose to run Gloom instead of the 4, which, oh god, good luck, uh, then you have even worse sustain problems. So that's not really manageable either. So that build just has absolutely terrible survivability. As for the gun build, um, you have decent survivability. It's actually not bad, but you Savagoth's problem is in his main form, he doesn't have that much armor, and he has about average health. So, you throw on Blessing, but then you just have average armor and no form of DR in your kit outside of Adaptation. So you're just relying on Gloom to just slow everything down so you don't randomly get one shot, but you will eventually randomly get one shot. Again, this... This could happen as early as 5 minutes, like a Bombard can easily just one-shot you only 5 minutes in with no DR, but it's not likely to happen, especially with Gloom, but you will just occasionally die as Savagoth if you're going a health tank build. That's just how it is, and there's really no saving it. Yes, you can run like 5 blue Archon shards for health and armor, but that will just delay the inevitable, and yeah, that's about it. Um, going the melee build, like the melee focus build using his shadow, you technically have higher survivability because the shadow has significantly higher armor, 
And since you're going to be in the shadow form the entire time anyway, and it doesn't really matter if you die in that form, you should theoretically never really die. But there is another problem. If you choose to get Blessing with that build, I briefly mentioned this earlier, if you ever die in the shadow form with Blessing, you instantly lose all of the stacks, and now your arcane's completely useless, because you just lost more than half of your health. So if you died while having double health, you're going to easily die with half health. So you're just going to keep spam dying, and now you're never going to be able to bring up Blessing again. So that doesn't work, and should you die... This is a problem with all of Savagoth's builds. Should you die ever, it is a complete pain to revive yourself because his passive is absolutely terrible. And if you if you fail to revive yourself with his passive, you can no longer revive yourself with uh, Last Gasp, which is significantly better. So for all of these reasons, I'm going to give his survivability, again, just an average rank of a B-. Now, moving on to viability, and I'll just be blunt here, his viability is terrible. He is not good anywhere except for Excavation, where he's good because of Gloom, especially if you stack another CC tool like Silence or Terrify with Creeping Terrify. And he's he can also theoretically be decent in Disruption, though I haven't tested it yet, but I feel like with his 1 debuff and his 4 ignoring the Demolus damage reduction, I feel like you could have a build where you utilize the 1 debuff or the 3 debuff and the 4 as, as um, along with the Shadow Claws. But outside of Excavation and maybe Disruption, like he's absolutely terrible everywhere. And I'll just say this, there's, there's a reason everybody subsumes Sevagoth, to give and it's to give other Warframes gloom and it's and they're not playing Sevagoth and putting other abilities on Sevagoth. It's because he really just isn't that great and he's really not that interesting, which is leading me to my D rank for his viability because again he's only good in excavation and somebody that would just flat out make the excavation points invincible like Limbo, Zephyr, or Frost is significantly better than just slowing the enemies down and potentially disruption. And that moves on to the final topic of is he fun, and again, no. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it at that, no, I don't feel like elaborating. I feel like I've made it clear from the rest of the video, there, there's so many annoying bugs and just stupid interactions like the ore is not stacking. Oh god, I never even mentioned, if you're, if you're not the host, sometimes when you enter his shadow form you just start drifting like you can't turn you can't use any abilities you can't do anything and the only way to fix it is to let yourself die and i only noticed it happening whenever i wasn't the host so he has like two separate host bugs with from two completely separate things in this kit like oh god like i did not have fun at all doing all of the sevagoth stuff and then not only that to play Savigoth, you have to Forma him a million times. I, w I had to waste 13 Forma and 2 Exilus Adapters. And not only that, not only did I waste 13 Forma and 2 Exilus Adapters, but I theoretically still need to Forma him more. I need to Forma the Melee two more times, and I need to, like, Umbra Forma the, uh, the Shadow build to be able to put an Exilus mod and max out my Umbral Fiber. Like... He requires so much investment, and he's just so mediocre, I absolutely hate this Warframe. On top of his Shadow Claws being, like, just not working properly, and they have such slow attack speed that you need to use Berserker's Fury and Arcane Strike, and even then they still feel bad, and the fact that he only has .95 sprint speed, so you're slow, like, I, I hate this Warframe. F, F fun. In conclusion, Savagoth is a C- tier Warframe who is riddled with countless bugs and questionable design decisions, but is one of the most subsumed Warframes in the game, yet one of the least played frames in the game. 